Thanks uh, to all the organizers for uh, the invitation. It's great to be here. And uh, yeah, thanks for surviving the week and coming. And <laughs> okay, so what uh, I'm going to, um, to discuss today is a joint work in progress uh, with uh, Daniela Alessandrini and uh, Hannah Wiener, um, both from Heidelberg. So let me just uh, tell you um, the point of view I have on this uh, subject. Um, am, I sh am I shouting too much? <laughs> I hear my. Okay, so let's take as uh, usual our uh, closed uh, surface uh, of genus G bigger or equal to connected, orientable, blah blah blah. Okay, so I guess uh, uh, we come from different uh, point of view, but uh, um, I think we all like and uh, so. Um, associated to sigma, we have our Teichmuller space, okay, which uh, I bet, uh, um, yeah, we know the importance. Uh, and uh, yeah, being uh, the last day, uh, I, I will use uh, a lot of uh, introduction that uh, all the friends before me did. So I'm using uh, all um, many things that people already introduced, so uh, I don't have to justify so much why you should be interested in those objects, but uh, let's do it quickly. So we can consider uh, Teichmuller space, uh, so you can define in many different ways, but uh, you can define as uh, this marked hyperbolic structure on your surface. So hyperbolic structure, I will write it using the XG structure notation, so H2 PSL2R structure on sigma up to homotopy, but. Um, and uh, uh, as yeah, people before me, in particular, for example, Tengrin, already noticed, uh, we can also consider this space uh, as uh, the space of uh, representation. This somehow. Nice, okay, so in this case, discrete and faithful. And uh, um, up, to up to conjugation, of course. And uh, um, those representations uh, are called the Fuchsian, okay, so this uh, space uh, is uh, often called Fuchsian space. And uh, uh, so th then, uh, the point is that we have PSL2R, we have a natural embedding into PSL2C, okay? And so we can try to see what happens when we deform away from a Fuchsian representation, okay? So let's say this is the picture that you have in mind, so you have your H2 inside your H3, and then you can uh, uh, try to see what happens when you deform. And uh, when you deform, uh, yeah, now we explain better. But, uh, so you get uh, another space uh, that I like it a lot, uh, which is the quasi-Fuchsian space. So you can uh, consider as, uh, in this case, uh, representation into PSL2C. I can't just put discrete and faithful. That would be too many. but. Uh, I restrict to, let's say, convex to compact. And again, up to conjugation. And uh, you can, uh, uh, so suppose that we take a point here, then uh, you can try to see um, what is the manifold associated. And uh, Jean-Marc, uh, uh, yeah, he, he consider this space and uh, he gave a full introduction uh, to this and so in this case uh, we can see what's what happened to the quotient uh, and uh, we have uh, that uh, this uh, is uh, our so now, surface uh, cross R uh, but then uh, we also have uh, a domain of discontinuity in the boundary okay so this is H3 and this boundary is uh, CP1 uh, so the action is not nice uh, on all CP1, but there is a domain of discontinuity, so 
we have our limit set in CP1, and then elsewhere, so this is the set of accumulation point of your representation, and then elsewhere, the action is nice. So if you consider CP1 minus the limit set, this is your domain of discontinuity, and you can then try to understand what is this quotient, and in this case, what you get is that you get two, um, two surfaces, okay? Because you can define quasi-Fuxian space, so you can see as the space of representation where the limit set is a topological curve, and so it split your CP1 into omega plus and omega minus, and the quotient of each one is uh, your uh, surface. So what we are going to do today is uh, and again, so here you can see as uh, the space of uh, marked uh, hyperbolic structure, this in this case on sigma cross r, uh, which is uh, a nice uh, structure. But uh, so our point of view today is uh, uh, to Consider, so we have this SL2R, you can also think as SP2R inside oh, SL2C, which you can think as SP2C. And then uh, our CP1, so is not only the projective space of C2, but you can also think as the space of Lagrangian of C2. So what we are going to do now, what I'm going to do, is to try to understand what happened in the next step. So what about what about in general, more general, SP2 and C, okay? So we will define uh, or uh, we will recall the notion of uh, some of the analogous of Teichmuller space, which is uh, the notion of Hitchin, so Hitchin representation in SP2 and R, and then you can put SP2 and R into SP2 and C, and uh, um, Guichard and Wiener define a domain of discontinuity in uh, the Lagrangian space, and we will try to understand uh, what is the homomorphism type uh, of this quotient. And I will try to also justify why this is nice, uh, because it can also help to understand the quotient uh, of uh, some other um, symmetric spaces. So you can put symmetric spaces into the space of Lagrangian. Uh, any question? Okay, feel free to stop me at any time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give a quick introduction to symplectic uh, groups, just uh, fixing the notation, uh, and then recalling uh, the notion of Anosov representation, uh, Anosov uh, um, representation into SP2 and uh, R and 2 and C, and, uh, and then I'm going to uh, try to study or tell you something about the space of Lagrangian. In particular, we will try to see the sp 2 n orbit, 2 n r orbit, uh, into the complex Lagrangian, and the SL2C orbit uh, into the space of Lagrangian, and we will give a, I don't know, I like this, we will give a, one of these, the open orbit uh, will have a nice uh, hyperbolic uh, interpretation in terms of tetrahedra. Okay, but uh, let's start. So symplectic Anosov representation. Okay, so let's start with this notation. So a symplectic uh, space uh, is uh, a pair where we have uh, a 2n uh, dimensional uh, K 
vector space. For us, uh, k will be always r or c. And uh, omega uh, will be our uh, non-degenerate uh, skew symmetric uh, by linear form on the vector space. And uh, we will consider the symplectic group as uh, the set of uh, transformation that preserve um, the form. So, in fact, uh, the example that uh, we will always consider is uh, when your vector space uh, will be k to the n, uh, and so in that case, uh, um, sp. So, and you can express uh, the omega k of x, uh, x, y, you can express as uh, x transpose the identity minus the identity. Why? And uh, um, so your symplectic group, uh, we will then denote uh, sp to n, k. Uh, in fact, we will often identify this case. Uh, so um, one example that we will use a lot uh, is that uh, we will consider VK as C4, and we will think C4 as the space of homogeneous polynomial into variable, which is what Tengrin was considering when he was thinking about the symmetric product, when he was looking at this unique irreducible representation to define um, an Ozov. but uh, and uh, in this case, uh, so this will be the symplectic form uh, is defined. Well, you you can give a general formula, but uh, just to um, give you an example because we will use it. Uh, so the symplectic form is defined by the following. And I think here I have a minus. It can be wrong. OK. Uh, so we will need to consider some particular subspace. So a subspace of your symplectic space is called isotropic, OK, or omega k isotropic, if L is contained in the orthogonal. And uh, it's called Lagrangian if it is exactly the same. Just as a remark, uh, all uh, one dimension isotropic, uh, uh, all one dimension subspaces uh, are isotropic. Okay? We will use it soon. Uh, so. We, in order to define an Ozov, we will define an Ozov with respect to some particular uh, case. So I need to give you some definition. So, so we will denote QI or QI of UK, the stabilizer of a one I dimensional isotropic some space. And we will define uh, I as I as the set of uh, I dimensional isotropic subspace, which uh, you can identify as uh, SP mod uh, this QI. Okay, if you were here last week with the mini course of Fanny. Uh, you have uh, seen uh, not this particular case, but many other similar 
um, other homogeneous spaces. And the other, other homogeneous spaces uh, that will come into play will be well, the Riemannian one. Um, So we will have, uh, we will denote as uh, XR and the space SP to an R mod UN. So this is the maximal compact here. And in the complex case, uh, you have SP to an C, and uh, this is uh, SP N. But then we, well, one other space that uh, funny uh, also consider is that uh, we don't have to just stick to the Riemannian case. So we also have some other affine, uh, uh, affine symmetric space, which in this case uh, is, uh, will be our XPQ, which will be SP to an R mod U PQ. Okay, and we are going to see lots of examples. So, um, yeah, just bear with me for a while now when, while I give you the definition, or I recall the definition that probably you already know. And uh, yeah, so now we have all the ingredients to define. Uh, so whenever you have uh, a representation, uh, so more, gamma, you take a word hyperbolic group, uh, just uh, think by one of a surface, uh, and uh, a representation is uh, qi anosov if uh, there exists uh, a rho equivariant uh, map, CI from uh, the boundary of your group uh, into these uh, eyes I, so into this space of isotropic uh, subspace, uh, which satisfies some properties. So the map needs to be continuous. It needs to be dynamic preserving. And what that means, it means that uh, whenever you have an element of infinite order, uh, you want to map uh, attracting fixed point uh, to attracting fixed point. So you want to map uh, Row of uh, the attracting and repelling uh, fixed point of gamma will go into the attracting repelling uh, fixed point uh, of the image. And uh, it needs to be transverse. And the transverse, uh, um, what uh, that means is that uh, Whenever you have two different uh, points, uh, then uh, you can consider this sum, so Xi and Xi transverse, that will need to give you the full space. And the last uh, and uh, a little more tricky property, I'm not going to define uh, precisely, um, so you, you need to have this uh, exponential contraction expansion. And again, so if you were here last week, uh, Fanny explained that uh, 
somehow, in the original definition of Anosov that is due to Francois, Francois Laboury, is uh, uh, this uh, fourth property is given in terms, of, uh, um, in terms of a flow. So you use a flow on uh, a certain uh, uh, bundle over some flow space. And then, uh, uh, so the original definition is due to Francois, and then Guichard and Vinard uh, generalized to general uh, word hyperbolic. Um, and then recently there is a, a work of uh, um, Gerito, uh, um, Guichard, Cassel, and Vinard, and uh, uh, Kapovic, Lib, Porti, where uh, they find uh, um, a different characterization in terms of the Cartan projection, which is in fact the one that Fanny gave. Um, and uh, we, d we don't need it today, and so I'm going to not go in too much into the details here. Uh, let's see what... Uh, and uh, I'm going to, um, for a particular case, we will see precisely what that will be, okay? So, but uh, we will do later when uh, we will be more concrete. Okay, so um, just a few remarks. Uh, I can just probably say loud. If you have uh, a parabolic subgroup, then uh, a representation is an of with respect to a parabolic subgroup, if and only if is QI Anosov for all the QI contained in your parabolic subgroup. And uh, um, a representation is uh, uh, Anosov with respect to the minimal parabolic, uh, if and only if it is QI Anosov for all the QI from 1 to n. Uh, and uh, uh, these... Uh, uh, these, uh, these representations are very nice, uh, as you have seen uh, from many other talks. Uh, so, in particular, you can, uh, you can see that uh, the kernel is finite, uh, the image is discrete, uh, and uh, uh, they form uh, an open uh, subspace uh, where uh, out of gamma acts uh, uh, properly discontinuously, and uh, uh, so they are, uh, um, they are very nice, uh, and uh, again, so since I'm going slower than how I imagine, I'm not going to write all of that, but, uh, um, and okay, so you can ask, okay, so let's see some example, and again, so you have seen many, but, uh, so the first example is, uh, is the one that probably by now you know very well, is the Hitchin, the case of Hitchin representation. And uh, um, how you define that, so you consider, um, you consider a representation, so you have a Fuchsian one. So Francois uh, also recalled it yesterday again, so you have a discrete and faithful representation, and then uh, you, uh, you can, uh, uh, actually I want to consider in SL, just, um, and I want to consider the unique irreducible representation into SP to an R, and so those representation are called Fuchsian, and uh, you consider the component uh, in uh, the component in the character variety uh, that contains a Fuchsian representation, or uh, if you want uh, a representation uh, is called each representation, if uh, you can deform, if there exists a continuous deformation into a Fuchsian representation. Uh, and uh, Francois proved that uh, each in representation uh, um, are QI Anosov for all I.
Uh, okay, so um, then another uh, set of nice representation are maximal one, and those uh, you have seen in Bea's talk. So again, I'm just uh, going quickly. We don't need uh, those, but I, yeah. So here you have, uh, for every those representation, you have a Toledo number, and uh, you have a Milner-Wood inequality, and uh, you look at the representation where this Toledo number is maximal. And uh, um, what is nice uh, is that in this case, uh, so uh, Burger, Yotzi, Labori, Wienerd, I'm not sure which one of the two. Uh, so maximal representation in this case um, are QN and also. Okay. And in fact, there are lots of still open questions. So small. The other, the other fact is that each in representation are maximal. So each in representation are maximal. So in, in fact, in particular, they are Q1 and Ozov. And so uh, one can ask, uh, are there other maximal representation uh, which are uh, small, non each in that are Q1 and Ozov, for example? So there are still things that uh, are not uh, well understood. And uh, another um, example is, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can embed uh, uh, so deformation. So you can deform uh, um, SL2R embedding just to give you a sense of this QI. So you can consider as uh, a symplectic space uh, R2 plus R2 with uh, small, your standard symplectic form on R2 plus uh, epsilon time, where epsilon is plus or minus one. And then you can do different things. So you can embed, so you, let's consider I to be a Fuchsian. Then you can consider the embedding where you put uh, a Fuchsian in one factor and the trivial representation in the other. And so this, uh, uh, this representation uh, um, will be Q1 and Ozov and not maximum. But then you can do, you can embed diagonally where epsilon is minus one or uh, when epsilon is plus one. And so in this case, uh, your representation is maximal, but in this case is uh, uh, Q2. So Q1 in this case is Q2. So is Q2 an Ozov, uh, but not maximal. And uh, um, you can do many other things by putting SL2C inside SP for R, and, uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so the definition I need to give is uh, the case, uh, the, the set of representation that uh, we will consider today, which is uh, what, uh, um, yeah, we, you can call it quasi Ichin or quasi Fuchsian, yeah, however you want. Um, and uh, uh, so. And uh, uh, those will be deformation of uh, uh, some representation that you can deform to an Ichin one, or representation that you can deform to a Fuchsian one. I need to tell you how, though. So you need to fix uh, one parabolic subgroup uh, or one of these QI, and so you define QI quasi Ichin representation as the set of representation that you can deform inside QI and Ozov. 
to a Fuchsian one. Rho is QI. Uh, QI quasi ichin. If you can deform inside um, inside the set of QI anos of representation to so you have your uh, to the complexification of a Fuchsian one. of a Fuchsian or Ichin representation. Okay, so uh, now important part, domain of discontinuity, okay? And uh, I will just focus on the case of Q1 uh, or UN anos of representation, because those are, will be the one that I will consider. And uh, um, so what you do is that, uh, so supposing that uh, you have uh, a Q1 anos of uh, representation, uh, then we saw that uh, these give us uh, a, um, a boundary map from uh, the boundary at infinity of your group into so i is one of so as i said it now but i is one of vk is the projectivization of vk so all subs, all one dimensional subs, subset and i is n will correspond to the set of lagrangian so you have this boundary map, and then you can define. So you can define the set of bad points, and now I'm going to define, and that will be a subset of the set of Lagrangian. And similarly, if you have a QN Anosov then your boundary map will take a value into the Lagrangian, but then your set of bad points will be a subset of the projective space. And how we define this bad set you define as, uh, as follows. So you define uh, uh, K of Xi1 as the union of K of Xi1 T, where T is uh, a point in the boundary of your group, uh, and uh, uh, where uh, K of L, where L is a point in the projective space, you can define as the set of Lagrangian which contain this point. And similarly, you can define small k of a Lagrangian subspace as the point in the projective space which are contained in your Lagrangian. And so that's how you define that set. And then, so what Gishar Wiener proved is that, so omega C1, which is Lagrangian of Vk minus um, 
k c1 and uh, omega xn as uh, the set of points that are not into this bad set. So you can see that these set are gamma invariant and gamma or rho acts um, properly discontinuously and co-compactly. And the fact that the action is co-compact is very nice because it will allow us to just study the quotient for a Fuchsian representation, what happened at the Fuchsian locus, and then we will know that the homomorphism type will not change. So Harrisman tarston type of principle. Um, and yeah, if you have a question, please ask. So what I'm going to do now, I'm switching to the second, whoa, I'm late. Um, I'm switching to the second part where we will study complex Lagrangian, okay? So we will, uh, the first results, we will study the sp2 and r orbits. And uh, um, so, um, let's see if I forgot anything. Uh, oh yeah, so you can ask uh, when those domain of discontinuity are empty. So there are cases that they can be empty, but uh, if, uh, if, the, um, if n is big enough, so in particular strictly bigger than the dimension of uh, the boundary of your group, these domain of discontinuity are non-empty. And uh, what we are going to do, we are going to study the quotient of the, the homomorphism type of the quotient. And, uh, uh, okay, so this theorem, which I'm not sure I'm giving you the right uh, um, reference, uh, but uh, yeah, the one I have is uh, due to somehow, he's in uh, Satake book, uh, but I'm, I think he's older, but anyway. Um, so you, you have, uh, um, you have a decomposition of your set of Lagrangian as uh, these uh, spaces uh, R0, Rn, where uh, Ri is uh, the set of Lagrangian. Uh, such that uh, the dimension of uh, W intersected W bar is I. And then, uh, um, so, Rn, so, is uh, the unique closed orbit and correspond to the real Lagrangian, or can be identified with real Lagrangian. Um, R0 will be the union of uh, um, certain, uh, how did I go? Um, yeah. um, I just say that R0 is uh, the union of uh, n plus one open orbit And uh, each of these open orbit uh, can be identified um, as, uh, you remember the space uh, X PQ that I introduced before, so it uh, can be identified as one of these uh, subspace uh, where P plus Q is equal N and P goes uh, from zero to one, uh, to N. And then, uh, for the Ri is an intermediate case, and it will be a bundle over uh, 
and R i uh, is a bundle over is the space of isotropic subspaces of R real one with uh, where the fiber you, you can identify as uh, U um, x p prime. Q prime, where P prime goes from zero to N minus I, and P prime plus Q prime is N minus I. So I wanted to give you the full proof, but maybe I will give you a sketch of this, uh, because I think it's uh, very nice. Um, uh, so what, uh, what you do, okay, let's start. Uh, um, it's clear the statement of the theorem. Okay, so um, let's start uh, by studying uh, which one I want. Yeah, R0. So um, what you do is that uh, you, um, given uh, your complex, uh, um, somehow given your symplectic form, uh, you associate an Hermitian form, uh, and then uh, you uh, define these spaces uh, as the spaces where this Hermitian form takes uh, uh, appropriate values. Okay, so, uh, so given WC, so you define H as follows, that's maybe not, um, as I, WC of uh, V bar V prime. And so this is uh, an Hermitian form. And then uh, um, given uh, a Lagrangian in R0, then uh, you can uh, see what happened to H restricted to your Lagrangian. And uh, um, and so the, uh, you have this identification uh, with, uh, so you have this uh, HPQ uh, as uh, the set of uh, Lagrangian such that the Hermitian form has a signature. Uh, has signature. PQ, and, uh, and then you see that uh, these you can identify as your, yeah, the affine uh, symmetric space that I introduced at the beginning. And uh, um, when, I, when you have instead uh, something in RI, so um, a remark uh, I didn't make is that, uh, so you have, uh, uh, Let's say you can consider you have this space, uh, um, which we know have, uh, uh, has dimension i. And uh, um, so a remark is that uh, it's real, uh, right? Um, so it's, uh, it comes from the complexification of a real uh, isotropic subspace. Um, and these, uh, these give you the projection into is i of r to k to n. And then uh, what happened is that uh, you can consider, uh, so whenever you have a point, uh, uh, a point here, so you can consider the orthogonal mod z, and that will be a 2n minus 1 minus i uh, symplectic space. So your uh, symplectic form restrict uh, to a symplectic form on this space, uh, um, and uh, uh, and then uh, you can see that uh, you can see that then uh, a point here is uniquely determined by uh, a point. Uh, uh, 
small. You can see that the fiber, basically you're trying to study the fiber, and then you can see that uh, this space is uniquely determined by um, something uh, where you know what happened because of the case studied before. So uh, here you have p plus q equal n minus i. And okay, I need to, uh, yeah, and then the last one is that, uh, yeah, so you know that, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is, um, yeah, easier. So you know that this space is, uh, um, compact and okay. Now um, SL2C orbit um, and uh, um, so the idea to study that is So in this case, um, if you want to study instead the SL2C orbit, um, in this case, I will look at Lagrangian in C4. And in general, it will be way different, because uh, uh, Lagrangian of C4, uh, this space has dimension 6, uh, and uh, that's the same as the dimension of SL2C. So what happened is that uh, you can see this space uh, as, uh, I don't know, oh, L0 union L1 union L2, where uh, um, L0 is uh, the unique uh, open orbit. And uh, um, so here I will think C4 as uh, homogeneous polynomial in two variable. And then uh, I, so what is L0? L0 is the set of Lagrangian um, such that uh, uh, there is no point uh, in W with uh, a triple root. And uh, what is nice is that uh, we will uh, identify this uh, open orbit uh, as the set uh, of uh, regular ideal uh, hyperbolic uh, tetrahedra. And that will make uh, yeah, studying the quotient, uh, at least for me, easier. But, um, and then uh, um, L2 is uh, the unique uh, closed orbit. And uh, um, correspond to the set of uh, Lagrangian, where uh, um, somehow all point in the Lagrangian have a common double root. And uh, yeah, the, the, other, yeah, the other space is the space in between. So it will be the set of Lagrangian where all the polynomial uh, have. So these uh, correspond also to the set of Lagrangian where there is no a common root in W. And so here, um, so L1 will be the set of polynomial, uh, a set of Lagrangian where uh, all points in the Lagrangian have a common uh, single root. But uh, how we ended up you know, thinking or studying those spaces, uh, it is because uh, spaces like that uh, uh, comes uh, uh, from this uh, set of bad points here. So, um, I'm going to consider a Fuchsian representation uh, and study this boundary map uh, and see how these bad points uh, come as uh, these. Um, any question before? I guess I will keep it that.
Okay, so now, now I can yeah, I stick to a Fuchsian um, representation, no? so discrete and faithful, and uh, I will consider inside SP two and C. Um, let's say SP four C. Um, okay, so. Then the boundary map in this case uh, um, can be defined uh, um, quite explicitly. So you have uh, C1 and C2. And uh, so I will consider um, the point of view small. I will just consider small the boundary as RP1. And so the image here will be so P of. Uh, C4, uh, and the C4, uh, remember, that is my set of polynomials. So it is the class uh, of the polynomial given by uh, that. Um, yeah. And the C2 will be small. In, I need to give you a point in the Lagrangian of C2. And uh, um, that will be the class of uh, bx minus ay cube, bx minus ay squared x. So in fact, uh, if you see, these uh, will be the image of the C2 in this particular case, the map C2. And so, um, in this case, uh, I can, uh, um, in fact, I can uh, extend this map uh, to CP1. Uh, just, uh, yeah, by keeping this definition. Um, and then, uh, you can uh, small the set of bad point uh, will be uh, the set of uh, a c one um, of t. So the set of Lagrangian that contain a polynomial with a triple root, which is exactly this. Okay. So the complement. Uh, uh, will be so and uh, you can also define this set for the complex curve and so uh, one c and uh, um, so what happened is that uh, here you have uh, an identification with uh, CP1 cross CP1. And in fact, you should think this CP1, you should think to that as Lagrangian of C4. So if you do the same in SP6, then you can do something similar. And here you have CP1 cross Lagrangian of C4. Um, sorry, Lagrangian of C2 in this case. And how you do that, so so you have two points, and you define, so in this way, you define in this way when the, on the diagonal, so Bx. Um, and bx minus a y square x or whatever um, if a b is equal c d and otherwise uh, what you do is that you do that 
and here you have bx, a y, and um, dx minus. And um, okay, so and uh, uh, in this way, so you understand exactly the set of bad point, uh, the one that we will need to throw away, and that these will be our RP1 cross CP1. Um, and uh, now we want to study um, everything else. So we want to study this L0 as uh, this, uh, um, oh, the set of, uh, yeah, so the set defined there. So the point is that every Lagrangian, for every Lagrangian, there is always a point with a double root, okay? So um, here you have always a double root, and uh, by using the SL2 action, we can consider this double root as being uh, zero and infinity. So let's say. Basically, now I, I want to prove the following. Ooh. I want to see that as a set of uh, regular ideal tetrahedra. And so I'm going to use the three degree of freedom that I have for the SL2C action. And so uh, any point here has uh, a... Uh, uh, point with a double root that zero and a single root that one and uh, so I use uh, uh, I use the SL to C action to suppose Z zero is equal zero and Z one is equal infinity. Then I want to study this uh, space, uh, which is the space of all uh, Lagrangian, uh, which such that x to y belongs to that. Uh, and this space uh, is homeomorphic to CP1 uh, because it's homeomorphic to the Lagrangian in C2. And so I use the last uh, degree of freedom. So basically, you look at all the polynomials such that the symplectic form with this one um, is zero. And it's zero with itself. And so by using this uh, last degree of freedom for SL2, we just uh, um, end up uh, to study. So this uh, L0 is the orbit of the Lagrangian x, x square y and x cube plus y cube. And then, uh, okay, I just uh, say quickly, so you use the discriminant uh, to understand uh, all uh, the polynomial with double roots uh, in this case, uh, and you notice that you have exactly four uh, uh, point, uh, and if you calculate uh, the cross ratio, the cross ratio of these uh, four special point uh, um, for this case uh, uh, give you the best cross ratio, so one minus square root of three i over two. So you have this regular tetrahedra, and also the single roots, uh, they form exactly the same regular tetrahedra, the dual one. And, uh, and uh, Using that, uh, we, were able, uh, uh, we were able then uh, to study this quotient because uh, um, so you have, uh, you have then this uh, set of Lagrangian as this uh, set of tetrahedra plus this uh, CP1 cross CP1, which you can think as the possible degeneration of your tetrahedra because uh, your tetrahedra having this nice symmetry, this maximal volume, uh, you cannot degenerate to a flat one. So you can only degenerate to a line or to just a point. And, uh, um, and the uh, set of this small domain of discontinuity here, it will be this uh, set of tetrahedra plus uh, your uh, RP1 cross CP1, 
And so it's, uh, it's clear now how to define a projection into H3 union. So from here, you can define a projection into H3 cross CP, small union CP1. And in this case, you have a projection into H3 union CP1 minus RP1. And so these give you a projection in H2. And so then uh, you end up uh, having to study the fiber of this map. Uh, and actually, the fiber, um, you basically have to study all the tetrahedra with the barycenter. So you send, here you send it into the barycenter or uh, into the first vector. And then you want to study all the tetrahedra with barycenter on a fixed line. And these uh, uh, give you this uh, four manifold uh, that it look like uh, this, in fact. Um, you have, uh, this is, supposing that uh, this is uh, your, uh, the line where your body center end, uh, and so at the extreme, uh, you have the CP1, uh, and uh, here, so tetrahedra with the fix, uh, um, with the fix body center, with the fix uh, body center is uh, this space, uh, which is the unit tangent bundle of uh, this orbifold. And in fact, uh, these uh, three singularity correspond to tetrahedra with a very particular symmetry. And so the idea is that uh, then this uh, quotient will correspond to uh, a fiber bundle over a surface with fiber. Uh, so in the case of when you quotient uh, a fiber bundle over a surface with, with the fiber, um, these uh, will, uh, so there is a still one point that we are not sure if it's an orbifold over, but I think it's just CP2 connected some CP2 bar because you have this construct. This construction is the same construction that you can get from CP1. And now I'm, uh, okay, I'm over time and I'm going very fast. So, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's a bit what I wanted to say. Thank you very much.